Okay, so there's a lot in the course um, about littleness and magnitude. In fact, I have a song called Sweet Magnitude, which is about that topic. So as we think of ourselves in the world, we are totally immersed in littleness. There's only so much of us. It's just one little body among billions and billions of bodies. And um, uh, it, it, the body is aging. The body is going to break down. The body is is going to get sick and it's going to die eventually. So that's being pretty little. <laughs> Where we come out of this vastness, and that's what many mystics have called it, the vastness, or the emptiness, which is really this empty fullness of infinity that you cannot put words to and you cannot put boundaries around. That's who we truly are. And uh, we have said, no, I don't want to be everything. I want to be this, this little special private person with private thoughts and so forth. So I wanted to take a look at what our strategies are as egos for staying in the littleness. And um, the X is here. This is meant to show each, each seemingly separate person is like within a crown of thorns. We're crucifying ourselves at every moment. So uh, our edges, we have to keep our edges. And I often talk about the, the metaphor of bumper cars, that, that in our daily lives, in our relationships, uh, we're always playing bumper cars with other people, whether it's um, somebody gets in my way and the, on the highway, or um, somebody is going too slow at the, at the grocery store, or somebody gives me the finger, or somebody, <laughs> You know whatever they're doing or I you know have a phone call from my sister or my brother or my mother or father or child or whatever it is and this this tension and this button pushing and that just keeps that nice distance away and that's why in many 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 relationships and this is why most the majority of marriages will fail is because um, the me is more valuable than the relationship <laughs> It's more important to have a me who's separate than it is to, to be as part of a we. That's huge. And um, um, so I have to keep my boundaries. So here are some of the ways that I'm going to keep feeling like a separate person. So we've got the conflict and the drama that we talked about. And um, uh, I should have put it say that the, there's a memory component here. So everybody, if you go back to your childhood, you have some kind of victim story back there. Something where you felt like you weren't loved enough or people weren't kind enough to you or people abused you or people ignored you or people bullied you or you know whatever it is they did. So we all have our scars from a lifetime of, of, of ways that people hurt us. So if nothing's going on in the present, do you see how often that your mind goes back? <laughs> Just pull some memory out. Oh, that felt so bad when they did that to me. And you still feel the hurt. Well, the hurt, emotional hurt as well as physical hurt, is a way of feeling your edges, feeling your meanness uh, contained in this story about how somebody hurt you or mistreated you. So uh, problems and needs. So well, every you know couple of times a minute, you have to you have the problem of needing air, <laughs> and you have to breathe. You know, so it's built into the body. The body has all of these needs. So the body is a problem. Keeping it fed, keeping it clean, keeping it entertained, keeping it hired, keeping it having money flowing in, uh, you know, whatever. So keeping it rested. So problems and needs, the body is, is Ken Wapnick has called it a need machine. That's what it is. So that's, that's one part of our strategy of keeping the me separate. Then sickness and pain. Oh, that's just like the icing on the cake. That is, you, you, you can't go too long without, um, without having something break down. And, uh, and, and that's great from the ego's point of view. So we have to go to a special doctor, we have to take special medicines, and why do you think we invented all of these side effects? I don't really want the medicine to work. 
if it works too well, I'm gonna damn well gonna have some side effects so that I can have another problem that has to be solved. Mm -hmm. And it keeps going and going. And then I can find fault with the doctor that they didn't give me the right medicine or they mixed up my medicines or the medicines combined and had a bad effect, effect on me. So it's all about being a body and being a sick body. And the Course says that anybody who thinks their body is sick indeed, <laughs> which I like that. <laughs> it's a sick idea that to think that we came from the vastness and we said, no, I want to be this, and, uh, and we protect this at all costs. And our sickness is just, it pays off in so many ways to be sick. To have, well, first of all, it makes you special. I have a sickness that you don't have. Or, or my sickness is worse than your sickness. Or my doctor is worse than your doctor. <laughs> I have all of this mistreatment that can go with being uh, that forth. And there's just daily uh, blame and judgment going on all the time to keep us separate from one another. So in relationships too, any kind of relationship, not just within a couple, but um, there's going to be... Uh, making guilty and it's also going to be a complaint you've changed you used to do this I like the way you were last year so I want you to go back to being that you need to straighten up I haven't changed you've changed that kind of thing and we play these guilt trips on one another um, <clears throat> another thing that happens as we were just discussing is is People say, oh, I need you to do this. Please do this. I, I'm just really suffering. I really need you to do this for me. And we don't want to do it. Well, do we keep on our mask of being sweet and nice and good? <laughs> do we make excuses? Um, because part of the me, uh, built into every me, is self-hatred. Each me hates itself because it's got all of this guilt coming from the belief that it's separated from God. So, so this, this um, self-hatred becomes unworthiness, and it says, well, I'm not worthy of anybody's love, but I can force them to do what I want by making them guilty. I'll do all this for them, and then they'll feel obligated to do this for me. And, and you know, so you have the sick child card, and, uh, <laughs> My child is sick, I really need you to help me with this. My dog is dying, I really need you to help me with this. <laughs> uh, I lost my job, I have no money, I really need you to you know, give me a loan kind of thing. <clears throat> There's a funny story about Bill Fetford who was, um, helped Helen, Helen Chuckman in the early days of the course, but somebody came to him and said, the Holy Spirit um, told me you should give me a thousand dollars or something like that. Yeah. And he said, that's interesting because the Holy Spirit just an hour ago told me that you were going to come to me and I was not supposed to give it to you. So, so because this is our conditioning, it's not an easy thing to break out of this. This is just our default setting. This is the way we're programmed. And I always say that, you know, we are um, Pavlov's dog trying to be retrained, but we're still going to salivate a lot when the, you know, ego waves its, its, it rings its guilt bell and we salivate like crazy. <laughs> so, um, The answer is going to be constantly going back up here, going back up here, remembering that there's another answer. Oh, I'm just dreaming and asking for help. Um, we have to ask for help to get out of this. So that's another one of the defenses I should have put on there is, is uh, the I know mind. This does not want to ask for help. This thinks it knows how to run its life knows how to manage its relationships. It knows how to keep the, the things balanced. This is falling, falling down. No, it's okay. It, it, it's, it's okay now. It is? Yeah, because it's gonna stop right about there. 
See, they're both <laughs> down on the joint. Okay. <laughs> See, this is my bumper car. I'm having problems <laughs> <laughs> with the charts. <laughs> bumper charts. <laughs> yeah. Which uh, broke my train of thought. The ego didn't want me talking about whatever I was talking about. I <laughs> mind knows. Like, oh, the I know mind. Yeah, okay. So the conditioning is such that um, to the ego, love is a threat. Because love is going to take us, it's going to undo this crown of thorns. It's going to, you know, take us out of the me into the we. It's going to take us back to the oneness. And no way, I need to protect my, my boundaries and my borders. So one of my defenses is I know. I know. And uh, many, you hear many uh, course students, you know, who pick up the course and start working with it. And you, and you try getting them to apply it to a real life situation. And they'll say, yeah, yeah, I know, we're all one, we're, we, et, et, et cetera, et cetera. But, <laughs> so the but comes in there. But, um, but in this situation, I need something practical. And I know what's practical. And I, I'll go to a different doctor or or I'll stay away from this person who's abusing me or, or whatever it is. So it takes a lot, like the first step in, um, the first step of the 12 steps in AA is, is acknowledging I can't do this. I cannot do this anymore. Things are not working. I, I you know, I, I, I need help. And, um, and we have to do on the, as course students, we have to do the same thing over and over and over. I cannot do this by myself. One of the wonderful lessons uh, in the earlier part of the workbook is I do not know my own best interests. I think I know, but how could the vastness can know, but you know, little me can't know when it's, when it's just defending itself. So asking for help is, is one of the big big ways out because then you at least create a little space in which um, the ego stops its yammering and you can hear a different a different answer you get the shift <laughs>